Hello, this is Techman88, and I just wanted to give a progress update on some of the Terracotta Quarry stuff I've been working on. Um, this is, I was experimenting with different delays. Um, then I was also experimenting with water streams. Uh, like this is one that I designed that's on a slope. A uh, movable water stream, sorry, so that uh, you could have like a, a tunnel bore carve all this out and then just run this water stream through, which should reduce the amount of work you need to do. And then the last one is, uh, this is a more standard sort of flat water stream. This is used in quarries like Comet 107 and El Mangos and probably a lot of other things. So what I did on this one is, this is actually Comet 107's uh, three-directional three TNT duper, but I tried to simplify it a tiny bit, but it's basically the same as his. And yeah, these are pretty difficult machines to build if you don't know what you're doing, like me. And uh, yeah, so I just use his and just try to cut out some pieces. But yeah, you would probably want a professional design this part. Um, so it moves back and forth and it's gonna push these glazed terracotta blocks and that's just gonna move back and then like push the other glazed terracotta block. So like this, this one here is connected to these two rows, like uh, these two columns, like column one and then column three. And then the other one is connected to columns two and columns four. So that's gonna give a blast pattern more like this, where it uh, yeah, shoots all, all these two at once, so they're not gonna blow up the items as much. And then it's gonna shoot the other two. So that's at least one pretty straightforward way to reduce item loss and increase efficiency. Maybe, I don't know, 30%. I didn't actually test it. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically the essence of this idea. Uh, Comet 107 was I've been talking to him and trying to work with him, and he's uh, he's got a different idea in mind that might get even higher efficiency. So I would just wait uh, wait for him to also uh, come out with a video or something uh, before you come to judgments or conclusions which one you should build if you're interested in building them. Like uh, from the screenshots he showed me, his is probably going to end up a lot simpler than this. Like, I, the screenshot showed very hardly any redstone up here. But I won't spoil that. So this, uh, I'm just going through a video frame by frame just to s try and show some item loss that occurs. And I have to go, you have to look pretty closely to actually see it. Um, but yeah, like this, is the, like, this is the first TNT that blows up. And it's gonna create a bunch of blocks that start with some upward momentum. And then the next TNT, if the timing is too close to the, the first TNT, that's going to blow up a couple of these terracotta blocks. Like you could see uh, this, this item entity just got destroyed by the TNT. It gets a little bit of velocity at first, but then it just disappears. And this isn't exactly the most professional way to do this. I think uh, probably you want to go into carpet mod or something, like mod, mod the server so you can you can actually inspect when the items get destroyed. But this works fairly well. And this is better than uh, using like a tick rate mod because you can actually, uh, you can see the items actually move at the actual speed that they're moving, not like jerking around and stuff. So if you want to stop this machine, it's the same as the TNT duper. You just uh, put a redstone block there and then it's going to uh, just freeze the machine like this. And you don't want to spam this because uh, like, if you spam it, it's going to move this whole pusher thing forward. So, yeah, uh, I'll leave the, the game in pretty much a state like this when I save it. Uh, so now onto the water streams. This is uh, the first one that I tried. This is just a pretty standard design for a... It's a flat water stream and uses these uh, these half slabs here and fen open fence posts to uh, to be able to move the whole thing. Uh, the problem with this is that it's only seven wide, at least in this design. So I'll just demonstrate it. And this isn't like a totally fair test. I've got an extra set of things offset in, uh, in this direction. But yeah, eventually, eventually some items like they start landing on, on this part. Then there's another weird kind of bug is that items will get stuck underneath here and it almost just happened right there. I'm really not sure why that happens. 
I think it has to do with pushing the machine at the exact wrong time. Uh, so that that issue could potentially be fixed. And yeah, these are these are from this set of TNT dropping. So I will I'll disable this set of machines. Just like this. So it's more of a fair test. And yeah, this this might be doable, but it has it does have some strange issues. Like when it, when the machine pushes forward, it seems to push all the items forward, and I've also seen them just drop straight down out of this water stream. So I don't really know. And also, I'm using pumpkins back here instead of like this. If you're really good, you use armor stands and stuff to create this this line of water sources, water source blocks. But I think. If I'm gonna do this, I don't want to deal with the the frost walker, walker boots and buying them and setting this up and debugging. And also another issue is that the the frost the frosted ice is gonna melt if it gets in the sun. So that's a lot of issues. And I think if this is gonna be an easier quarry, you probably want to use pumpkins. Now the. The advantage of this system is that it's flat. I think uh, that's the main reason to use it. It's that uh, you can have like a, a totally flat standard tunnel bore carve out this area, and then uh, then just use this. You don't have to invent new machines like a new tunnel bore to make a sloped uh, to make a sloped cavity for this to go into. And I found that there wasn't really any problem with the TNT blowing up like these open fence gates. Or the slime over here. It's the TNT is just far enough away that that's not an issue in all my testing. So the next thing I tried is a sloped water stream, and I had to custom design a new flying machine to do all this. But I found it's not too complex. It looks pretty bad, but I think if you build this with light matica or something, it's not a big deal. And this seemed to resolve a lot of the issues. It's so much wider. This is a 10 wide versus 7 wide on the flat version. So, yeah, a, a lot of some development remains to be done on this. The first one I showed, the flat one, uh, like maybe with some work that could be made, uh, that could be made wider. But that that is the fundamental problem with it. I think is that on on the first version I showed, items would just land up here on this part. And again, I'm just using the, the pumpkins for water sources. So there's water sources all along here. Uh, at least in 1.13, you need, you need them like this. It might look a little strange here that I don't have anything in front of the thing, like to, to have another set of blocks. But I want this to be as simple as possible. And that's just another bit of flying machine that you would have to, to develop. And I found that uh, when you do it like this, the water streams actually are pretty much the correct way. So there's like this this little angled piece right here. And uh, yeah, that would push a, a little bit of items over to the side, but I found that they actually would land in a water stream, like you'd have a, a water stream over in this area. And another difference from uh, the more standard movable water stream thing uh, is that these are moving in pieces. I just felt it would be a little bit easier to, to build like this. And I haven't seen that any water overflows or anything. This, I don't think this is different in 1. Uh, 1.12 or something where there's random ticks happening. So yeah, I, I didn't find that's an issue. And this obviously looks like a mess, but I don't think it's too hard to build. And I think another nice advantage of this is that it should actually fit in a smaller area. I think I could move this up a couple blocks higher, and there wouldn't be any risk of the, the TNT blowing up this slime here. And of course, slime has zero blast resistance, so it would already be blown up right now if that was a problem. So yeah, I think you could maybe move this up uh, two blocks, and then you could have a like you could have a tunnel bore 
that carves out like a seven high or maybe even six high uh, six high gap for this to go through and I think it would be just fine so in terms of uh, yeah my, my current conclusions on this I think this might be might be the right idea but uh, like it would need a tunnel bore there needs to be a suitable tunnel bore to actually carve out this area and I don't really know how to design it, but there are other people that I'm sure could. So I will have a world download for this, and I'll just show you how to use it. Um, if you don't spawn like right here, uh, these are the coordinates. And then uh, like this one, you start just by removing that redstone block. And I've tried to put some instructions on here. So that should work. And of course, this is 1.13.1. Uh, uh, unmodded. I'm just using Optifine. And I would definitely recommend using Optifine for this because all these CNT explosions can be very laggy on the client side. So, yeah. Yeah, this up here is the, the Optifine version. And then the last one in this demo is over here. And sorry about this world, it's, it's a pretty much a mess. But, uh, yeah, this one you launch like this. So my conclusions, uh, one is development is still happening. Uh, like Comet 107 is interested in this and he's a very good red center and also uh, just knows his stuff very well and just the sign that he's interested in this is very good. Another conclusion is that both this sloped water stream and also the flat water stream over in this direction, they're both definitely still options. I think I would prefer to use something like this, but this this does have more risk of blowing up the uh, the blocks here, the fence gates at least, uh, because they're not protected by the water streams, and also also this would need more development. I'm sorry about the frame rate. My I'm running through these at once at the at the moment, and the goal on this is not 100% efficiency, but how easy you can build it. So there's pretty much infinite terracotta that you can mine by this method, but if it's so hard to build just to get a little bit more percentage efficiency, then it's uh, then it's really not worth your effort. So yeah, I'm, I'm just focusing on the easiest easiest way to build this, like less slime, uh, less limestone, less complexity, etc. And also in 1.14, there's a 100% uh, drop rate on the the blocks that you blow up with TNT. So now it's only about one fourth, uh, just because TNT has power four, like according to the wiki. So this will be four times the amount of items that you get out of it in 1.14. So anyway, uh, I hope you found this enjoyable or informative or something, and uh, thank you for watching, and goodbye.